Hello and welcome to the Empire Beat Magazine podcast. My name is Michael Thomas, and today's episode I have the privilege of introducing Kisa Steele, and she happens to be my cousin. And she's going through some things right now that I think is going to be important for a lot of people to hear. And I'm looking forward to her spreading her knowledge about this subject. And I'm not going to mention the subject. I'm going to let her do that. And so with that said, this is my cousin. So I'm going to say hi, cousin. So I'm going to let you take it away. Hey, cousin. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here on Empire Beat Magazine podcast. And I am uh, going to be talking about ADPKD. And what is ADPKD? It's autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, which is a mouthful, but it is something that I'm dealing with, as you stated. And I think the reason why I want people to know a little bit about it is because um, it can lead to a need for either... Um, dialysis in some cases as it progresses, or even um, a transplant. And in my case, a dual organ transplant, which means I need two organs. Even though it is a kidney disease, it is um, it is also likely to affect other organs. And in my case, it also affects my liver. And so I am looking at um, being evaluated for both the liver and kidney transplant simultaneously. Wow. And <clears throat> I don't know if you have any specific questions you want to ask about that, but um, there there probably is a lot to know. Well, that's an understatement. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I'm really proud about the way you're handling this. I, on the other hand, would not be able to handle it as well as you are. So my hat goes off to you for that. Uh, it takes a strong individual to face it the way you are right now. Well, thank yeah. you very much. I really appreciate that. And I can't do anything alone. You know, being able to have support and, you know, friendship from like you or my family is imperative. And I'm, I'm grateful, really, that I can... Um, that I have family and friends that I can, you know, get help from uh, during this time. It is sometimes hard, but I'm grateful that things have been, uh, is, ultimately, it's been smooth because of the support. Okay. So can you tell me, for someone who doesn't really know what's really going on, can you explain... The, the, I guess I guess we're better when we say disease. Can you explain that to me or to the audience? What it entails? What are your treatments? Uh, where you stand today? Uh, going through the treatments that you're going through. Sure. So this condition is a genetic condition, and as a result of it being genetic, it can be inherited from a family member. Occasionally, it can happen spontaneously, but what happens is the kidneys are, um, they manifest cysts on both kidneys, and it's usually detected by some sort of imaging like an ultrasound or uh, a CAT scan or an MRI, something like that, where uh, a doctor would, you know, send you for some sort of a test. Some people find, discover it by accident because they're being examined for something else and they end up seeing that there's, you know, cysts on both kidneys and it can also develop uh, other symptoms like high blood pressure. And um, that was what happened in my case. I ended up with uh, random high blood pressure. I don't want to say random, <laughs> but uh, I ended up with high blood pressure and I discovered the high blood pressure really by, accident because I had a work injury and I had to go to a workers' comp doctor. And while I was at the workers' comp do doctor, they had a hard time taking my blood pressure. So while I was being tested, they said, you really need to get this checked out. And when I followed up with my primary care, they 
was given the report that said, hey, this is highly indicative of polycystic kidney disease. I didn't know what it was. And that's really the beginning of my story. And I have been really trying to manage my blood pressure the best that I can, because that's very important. That's one of the things that I think is um, critical for most patients once they are diagnosed. It, it's going to be important to manage your blood pressure. And I believe you, you have had blog posts and articles that you have referenced with, um, with Empire Beat Magazine that may talk about health and how to manage your blood pressure and, and things like that. I think those are all things that are helpful. Diet, exercise, the same things that you would do to normally control your, your blood pressure and your health are still things that you would need to do with a polycystic kidney disease um, uh, diagnosis there, that doesn't stop. You still have to, and maybe even more so, be very vigilant when it comes to your health overall. Okay. In a typical day, what do you eat? So I eat a pretty, um, I guess, dynamic diet. I eat a lot of different things. So I usually will eat in the morning. I'll have perhaps eggs with um, uh, sometimes with accompaniments, not usually meat, um, but I eat um, oatmeal sometimes. I'll cut up apples to put in the oatmeal and um, I make a lot of salads and um, seafood. I do eat some um, seafood, like I'll make salmon or other types of fish and have that with vegetables or I'll make soups. I make chili, you know, all kinds of different things. Um, diet is important. And I would say that I limit red meat. I don't eat a lot of red meat. And me personally, I don't eat pork. I really haven't eaten pork for years and years, not necessarily because I have polycystic kidney disease, but I just don't really um, do well when I eat it. And I try to incorporate a lot of vegetables and I don't try to, um, I don't try to eat a lot of unhealthy foods, like uh, a lot of fried foods that are really, really greasy. Um, I do eat pizza and things like that. It's just something that I don't eat often. Okay. So basically, you have the diet that my doctor wants me to be on. <laughs> oh, um, okay with that. I'm so happy for you. I always start my day off with ice cream if I could. But with that said, I'm going to go back and I think I want to delve into uh, your mindset. Uh, what type of attitude do you have? Uh, what helps well, you? That is a, ver a very interesting question. So I would say that I try to remain positive. I try every single day to just start positive and remain positive, maintain the positivity every day. I try really hard. You know, I'm not going to say I never have a bad day, but I will say that my bad days are limited because I am intentional about being positive, aggressively so, my sister would say. <laughs> you know, I, I try to choose the positive path whenever I'm presented with a challenge. And that's easier said than done, but I definitely try to choose a positive viewpoint whenever possible. And um, I, I also try to be kind to my future self. You know, I guess I'll, I'll say that there are decisions that I'm going to be making every, every day, just like all of us, about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to do with my time, and how the thing that I choose to do right now or today, how is that going to affect me tomorrow? How is this decision going to affect me in a week? How is this decision going to affect me in a year? And I'm going to choose usually 
to do something that will help me in the future at some point. If that, and I hope that makes sense. You know what? That's great advice for life. Period. <laughs> um, it really is great advice, and I think uh, more people should, myself, should try to live that philosophy daily as you do. So that's why I'm, that's again why I'm so proud of you. You're such an inspiration. But with that said, let's move on to uh, for people out there that need encouragement that would like to contact you and where you can share your tips and advice to the audience. And where can they contact you? Yes, that's uh, that's actually wonderful. Um, I would love to talk to people if they were dealing with a, whether it's a singular organ or a dual organ transplant. It doesn't necessarily even have to be, you know, a a, a kidney or a liver transplant. Um, I'm very curious in nature anyway, but I handle on Instagram is at Kisa Still, and the um, name is on the screen, but you would just at Kisa Still on, uh, on Instagram, or um, I also have a YouTube channel where I have uplifting quotes and, um, and things there. I also have some content about travel that I've done to Kenya. So if there was anyone who wanted to drop me a comment on YouTube, and that that's also available. Check out the uplifting quotes and uh, drop me a message and um, we'll see how we can com commune together, fellowship together in regard to this journey. And it is a journey and um, it doesn't have to be diet. It doesn't have to be um, a negative experience. Um, not saying that, again, there won't be bad days, but every day that you can be better towards yourself is just going to be, you know, a, a better experience for you every single day. And, and for those who, who aren't watching the video, but they are listening to it, could you spell out your name? Uh, your handle? Yes. At Kisa Still is K-I-S-A-S-T-T-I-L. S-T-T-I-L is short, really, for Speak the Truth in Love. That's, you know, that's a beautiful. It really fits you and your personality. And so with that said, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, hoping everybody has a great day. Stay strong. And see you next time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, as always. Take care. All right. You too. Thank you for tuning in to the Empire Beat Magazine podcast. And if you enjoyed today's episode, we kindly ask you to subscribe and share it with your friends and family. Until next time, stay inspired, stay positive, stay curious, stay strong, and we'll catch you on the next episode.